Today we'll begin with a new chapter that is chapter 46, Poet Devotee of Lord Sri Kaleshwara. This chapter refers to the anecdote of a poet who was a devotee of Lord Kaleshwara and who did not believe in Sri Narsimha Saraswati's divinity and therefore was talking disrespectfully to him. But he soon realizes the great mistake of his assessment and becomes a staunch devotee and close disciple of Sri Guru Nath. Very good morning, Jai Shri Krishna Guru. Thank you for joining Shri Guru Charitra Satsang. Wishing you all a very happy Wednesday. Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Om Shri Ganeshaya Namaha Om Shri Saraswataya Namaha Om Shri Guru Dattatre Namaha Om Shri Mahalakshmi Namaha Guru Brahma Guru Vishnu Guru Devo Maheshwaraha Guru Sakshat Parabrahma Tasmai Shri Guru Ve Namaha Shri Guru Charitra Satsang. I think this is a, a very standard story with all respect to the Divine Masters. Everybody comes and doubts them. See, they don't doubt the, the fake gurus in this world. But when it's concerning a real master, they always doubt. Why so? That is because our mind never wants us to rise above. It is afraid that, you know, the Indra, the, the mind whose, whose king is Indra, Lord Indra Dev, will lose his throne. So this is something you always have to be very careful about. Never doubt the real master. And that is why in Guru Charitra, we are learning the nature of this real master. How to recognize him. How to know when this master is in front of you, not to doubt him. How to not question him and have absolute faith in this great divine being. Because it's only because of his grace that you have the ability to meet him. Or not even that. He's the one who's giving you an audience with him. And you have to be extremely grateful about it. Without his grace and will, nobody can ever have an audience with him. In fact, we already learned about it. So just reiterating the point, never doubt the real master. Understand the nature of this guru and be very grateful when you ever get to meet or be in the presence of such a great master so that you can seek the blessing and the grace of this guru so that you can evolve on your path of spirituality. So let us begin. Sintamuni continued with the narrative of the Guru Leelas. Once one of the devotees of Sri Narsimha Saraswati requested him to visit and grace his house in Hipparaj village. Gurunath visited the house. The devotee worshipped Gurunath with elaborate rituals. In the same village, there lived a pious and devout Brahmin named Narakesari, who was also a poet. He used to go daily to the Kaleshwara temple in the village and, after completing his worship, used to compose a few poems in praise of Lord Kaleshwara. This was his routine every day. Some of his friends told him that Sri Narsimha Saraswati had come to the village to a devotee's house. They told him that he should also come and take his darshan. They further asked him to compose some poems in adoration of Sri Narsimha Saraswati and to recite them before him. To this, Narakeshari reacted with disdain and said contemptuously that this poet was not meant for a human being, however great he be. He did not go for Gurunath's darshan. And as he won't, went to Kaleshwara temple and started his worship. But as he started it, he fell asleep and had a dream. In the dream, he saw Sri Narsimha Saraswati seated there in the same place of same place as of the Linga and heard him telling, You have been all along worshipping me, a mere human being. Why are you worshipping a mere human being and moreover one for whom you have no respect at all? Oh my God! What does that mean? Guru Sakshat Parabrahma. The Parabrahma is manifested in the form of the Guru. So all the gods and goddesses 
rest within this great divine being alone. So who do you think you are worshipping? You are worshipping a human being? Of course not. You are wor worshipping that divine manifestation, that unmanifest, the Parabrahma himself and that Paramatma whom you are you know, all you, whom we all aspire to attain, to understand, to know. And that is how we attain our spiritual will. That Parabrahma, that Paramatma you are worshipping. And what are you saying? He's an ordinary human being. This is how our mind reacts and doubts. And what happens to us? We then fall off that path. We don't get that grace. See, this grace is not gotten so easily. But when you have the grace, why do you ruin it. There are a lot of people in this world who would want that opportunity. But you have that grace. So make use of that grace. We say right, the Guru, you know, Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo, Maheshwara, Guru Sakshat, Parabrahma, Tasmai Shri, Guru Ve Namaha. What does it mean? Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh, everything is the Guru itself. Guru is that Brahma, Guru is that Vishnu, Guru is that Maheshwara, Lord Dattatriya, the Trinity's rest within him. He is the supreme master. And what are you saying here? That you are a human being? That is how our mind creates doubts. And when these doubts assail you, then you cannot have that faith. And without faith, you cannot get love and devotion unto the lotus feet of this great master and Lord Sri Krishna. And then what happens? You will just remain that being and that even when the grace walks and comes to you, you are not taking it. This is the sad part. But let us see what happens to Nar Narakeshari. Then in the dream, he saw Sri Narasimha Saraswati seated there in the same place as of the Linga and heard him telling, You have been all along worshipping me, a mere human being. Why are you worshipping a mere human being and moreover, Moreover, one for whom you have no respect at all. The dream ended thus and Narakeshari came to his senses, realizing what a great mistake he had committed by not paying heed to his friend's persuasion and advice. He hurried to the devotee's house for Gurunath's darshan. As he was offering his obeisance to Gurunath, Gurunath said, Why are you offering obeisance to me? A mere human being. <laughs> that is so beautiful. Please remember, your Gurudev is not an ordinary human being. He is all pervading. He is omnipresent, omnipotent and omniscient. There is nothing that he doesn't know. He understands everything. Yet, he acts as an ignorant being. He acts as himself an ordinary human being. That is what he'll show you. And he'll tell you, okay, you want to see me as an ordinary being? So be it. As is your faith, so are your experiences. It is what you give is what you get in thousand times. So if you give that faith, that faith will come back to you in thousand more times. If you give love, the same love will be returned back to you. So what is that you wish to see and what is that you wish to give him? That offering is always returned back to you. So be very careful. If you put doubts in that guru, then you are going to always be doubting thousand more times. It is not just going to be that one percent of the doubt that you had. It's going to come back in thousand more times to you. That is what he's going to bless you with. So always be very careful to what are you you know, seeking in that. The faith, if you establish the faith in the divinity, your faith will become stronger and stronger and it will be absolute, unshakable. So, have that faith. So, it is what you see. So like they say, right? What you sow is what you reap. So, what are you seeing in your Gurudev? If you see doubt, then doubt is all you are going to get back. So, never do this mistake. Always have that absolute faith, unflinching faith. You know, complete surrender, unconditional pure love and exclusive devotion. Then magic happens. No matter what happens, your, the grace of your Gurudev is always on your head. There's nothing shall befall you. The firewall of protection is always around you. There is no evil that can even touch you. Such is his grace, such is his protection. Why do you need to, um, you know, from your own uh, with your mind's self-conceit and deceit and because of your doubting nature, why do you want to discard that grace that comes so easily? Even after many lifetimes, people don't get such grace. But you are, if you're privileged and you're the lucky one, if you have this grace, please make use of it. Yesterday I was telling someone, you know, my 
Krishna Guruji is one of his disciples, was visiting him. And that time I was telling him, don't you know waste this grace. Listen to the satsangs. The satsangs are the only thing that can keep you from falling down. See, your mind is always going to push you downward. And it is going to show you how bad your life is. You know, you'll go into the depressive nature of yours. And the only way to come out of it is when you listen to the words of the Guru. Somewhere it will hit you. And then that one that one thing which will make a difference to you will help you rise above. So listen, don't give up listening to the satsang. That is the only good that you can do to yourself. And do your duty, whatever that you wish to do. Continue to do. Things will fall in place. But don't stop doing. That is what is important. And don't fall in that mind space. Which is, it's not just for him, it is for any one of us because we all go into that zone of our mind. The mind will always show you downwards, you know, how bad is your life, how sad, oh, you are not getting anything, you're not successful, you're not doing anything, your life is worthless living. That is not how you should look at it. Yesterday, my Guruji, I don't know if it's yesterday or day before yesterday, he was giving a very beautiful lesson in Bhagavad Gita, Satsang. And in that he was telling, see, doing alone is your right. Doing the duty, you must absolutely, for my sake, for whose sake? For Lord Sri Krishna's sake. And don't bother about the outcomes. Don't bother about what is the end result going to be, whether you're going to succeed or fail. It doesn't matter. You know what? The freedom is lies in not even bothering about whether you're going to win or you're going to lose. On the contrary, the freedom is that you gave your best shot at it. You put all your heart and soul and you perform the task. And that is freedom. And then there is no expectation, right? Am I going to win? Am I going to fail? You know, we always live in a, in a state of anxiousness. We are, ang you know, my Guruji will tell anxiety neurosis. But you don't have to be anxious about what is the what is the outcome going to be. Why should you be anxious? That which is right, he will bless you with. So don't worry. Even if you fail, it doesn't matter. Still, that failure is a, it's a success itself. You might not understand how can you take a failure to be a success, but you will not realize at that moment in time. But much later in life, you'll realize, oh, yes, I'm very grateful for that, uh, you know, failure because that is what made me who I am. I learned a very important lesson. They say, right, failure is a stepping stone to success. If you don't fail, you don't know what it means to succeed. And your failure is not a failure. In, in the failure, there is a lesson which you have to learn. Because you have not been able to, you know, get that knowledge completely, that failure is an important lesson. So that lesson is more important. Gain that knowledge and evolve. So when you have that knowledge, the right understanding, the discernment will happen. When you are able to discern, then you will understand the truth. See, today it is very easy to just say, oh yes, I know I have studied this. But how do you understand what does that knowledge mean? How does it firm within yourself? Till the application of knowledge doesn't happen, you don't understand what exactly it means. So, you know, yesterday I went for a meeting. It was very interesting. I didn't know, I've never met these people before, but yes, there was a request and I went in. I didn't go with an expectation, I'm going to get something out of it or I'm going to, you know, do some great business. No, I went with an open mind to learn. It's an exploration. Exploration is you kind of find out what can be done together, whether there is a possibility to work together. All those kind of exploration happens. But sometimes it is just meant to be like my Krishna Guruji will say, why you meet certain people, wherefore, we don't understand. But I have to be best in that meeting possible. Even if that if it means there is no outcome going to come out of it, it doesn't matter. But it was required. How that can convert much later in life, we don't know. Or maybe I just need to understand how the world is, how different people work. Maybe that was just a knowledge per se. Okay, at the end of the day, you learned something. You got something out of it and just move on. And don't bother about the success and failure. Just surrender at the, to the will of the divine Lord Almighty and just do what you have asked to do. But with absolute faith in him. The word is called faith. Even if you have 1% of doubt, then the faith doesn't exist. It is not 99.99%. It is 100%. It is absolute and unflinching faith. That is the kind of faith you need to have. When you have faith, you can move mountains. That is what they say. So your faith will make things happen. How much you know, in how sincere and how truthful are you to your Gurudev? How much you believe in him? That will show up in the way things will span out. So don't worry about anything. Have this absolute faith and magic shall happen. You will experience him. So never doubt this great master. What does it again teach us? The charitra of a Guru. Who is this Guru? 
what is this nature how do i recognize this real master this is what everything is being taught about yesterday i was telling again uh, this person i was talking to i said to him you know what the freedom we were talking about how there is a freedom when you are not getting attached to the fruits of your action the end result you are not attached and that time life is magical because you know what is what is anxiousness what causes stress because we are expecting a certain outcome to come about and if that outcome doesn't come then you are in trouble then you'll get depressed then you'll get into your anxiety then you'll you'll get frustrated you'll say oh life is very bad to me nothing happens in my world god is not kind to me or we'll go into a martyrdom and not just that then we'll become very negative being on the contrary how do you see upside of everything you know i keep repeating the story which lord datatre gave me right early on much early i think just as in back in 2010 as early as that here i met my guruji rather my guruji found me in 2009 and in 2010 this beautiful lesson which the tat lord the tat ring imparted and that is please remember one very important thing he told me he said everything is happening for the good alone even if you think that event is not you know favorable or palatable to you please remember this one lesson that everything is happening for your good alone and hold on to your gurudev's feet never leave his feet no matter how much you you might even hate him at that moment in time because you will not like what you are going through what your guru has put you through you might not like it you will you are not you are going to revolt you are going to feel depressed you are going to hate him you are going to get angry all these things will happen but that is a part of the spiritual process it is a part of a learning curve so don't ever you know don't ever give up that faith in your gurudev believe in him saying that he is doing everything for your good alone this one lesson i held on to it even today that's one thing that makes me going on actually i'm not doubting my guru today at all but there was a point in time when anything my guru says i wouldn't want to accept that is not me that's my mind like my again krishna guru ji will say your mind and you are not two different people it's one and the same because where is the mind the mind is from head to toe that is how it is and you can never catch this creature it is always invisible you don't know where it exists also but if you believe there is a mind the mind will come into existence but if you think there is no mind there is no mind but these are all very esoteric and profound truth about life about spirituality and you have to evolve in that it is your quest and your journey how you evolve on understanding this truth about life see we don't make effort again my krishna guru ji will say today we are all learning in a very superfluous man manner it's only surface level we want to learn they are not going deep in that subject to understand the truth anything because today our mind is doesn't have that concentration or the span of attention the attention span is too less it can't stick on to a subject for too long it's it's the moment you know it has a timer and the moment the time is over then the mind will jump into another thing the gen jump into another thing so there is no focus there that is why my krishna guru ji will tell teach us how to have single pointedness how to have that absolute focus in that subject where you go 100% do that task complete it in in the best possible manner and then move on so when we are multitasking our mind is also not able to take that i used to be a multitasker and you know i'm doing too many things but when i came to you know when i met my guruji and when he started teaching me he said you should always focus on one subject a task at hand and parallelly do different things so what happens is sometimes you say okay now this is how i have to go and then we stretch our time so we are not going to we are not managing everything in a sequential manner so there is that is when we will fail why because then we want to extend doing the same task we will be able to extend our time so you have to compress this is what my guru ji will teach us you have to compress the time which means you have to accommodate too many things in the same amount of time you have to be performing quite fast you have to be quick and that is what we will miss and then we'll blame the guru you only told me no not to uh, you know multitask now you are telling me i have to do too many things but we have never understood what the guru is talking about why because who is trying to understand the mind is whatever the mind says is it right no because the mind wants to oppose the divine master that is why it will resist knowledge it will never allow you to rise above it will never allow you to study that is why the mind has to be trained how do you train when your mind it's a simple solution if your mind is saying i don't like this please go and do the same thing which your mind says i don't like it 
but the moment you pander to your mind and not do what it says i don't like it then you're succumbing to your mind the only way to overcome the mind or control it is when if you think you like something don't go and do that if you if your mind tells you it doesn't like something go and do that so that is the only way of overcoming or controlling your mind and after a point in time the mind will start listening to you and then you can use the mind the mind is a powerful tool please remember in bhagavad gita lord shri krishna has said i am the mind as well in the indriyas okay he is the mind the powerful tool which the weapon the tool which lord has given us and we have to use it so that we can attain our spiritual goal our goal or whatever that we have to attain in our world so use the mind in the right direction in the right manner but before that you have to train your mind and that comes with sadhana that comes with practice it is not one day you have to be consistent very simple last night i slept a little later did i wake up this morning no i was completely shut off so what happens my mind has already shut off even i couldn't even hear the alarm i think much later i heard but i was so sleepy that i couldn't wake up but who's making me fall asleep it is my mind so that effort has to be extraordinary so if i have to overcome my mind and wake up even though i might have slept late that doesn't matter but the spiritual strength in me has to make me wake up and go on i have to be able to wake up the same time even if i even if i have slept late so that is the effort that has to come from me so i can't blame my mind i have to blame myself my effort is not enough so what does it say we have to put our doers effort so anything that you do which is evolving on the higher path you know it is not going to be easy but let me tell you with the grace of the divine guru he is he makes your path very smooth because he is hand holding you and guiding you through that path so just follow that instruction and do your sadhana you will be able to reach your destination whether it is in material world or spiritual world it is one and the same how do you go about attaining anything right even spiritual attainment are we not saying it's a success correct right but it's not about success you have to reach that destination likewise in your material world you have certain goals which you have to accomplish so to accomplish you need to plan properly you have to work on that task every single day and see how you are progressing and you need to identify where is your shortcomings and fix that that is how we will be able to evolve so coming back to our lesson and the point we went back in a big circle and we're coming back to that lesson it is about faith don't doubt don't ever doubt the real masters their ways are not comprehensible at all they are they are indescribable and unfathomable and inscrutable so just have faith don't go by their appearance and that is what is being taught as part of their nature what to do as a disciple what not to do how to become a ardent devotee of such gurudev when you have the opportunity and the blessing hold on to it and evolve for your spiritual wheel so let us see what happens as he was offering his obeisances gurunath said why are you offering obeisances to me a mere human being narakeshari burst into sobs praying gurunath to forgive him for his ignorance and error he sang poems in adoration of gurunath and worshiped him gurunath was pleased and blessed him narakeshari thereafter came to live at gangapur devoting his life in the service of the gurunath he composed many songs hymns and rich poetry in adoration of gurunath so what happens the same talent that god given capability and ability is now you know channelized towards serving your gurudev alone he is a poet imagine how beautiful praises and you know uh, glories of gurunath he will be able to write and the same thing he is actually singing the hymns to praise his guru in devotion to his guru expressing his love that is what is the ultimate attainment of that quality of the talent which god has bestowed upon you it is extremely important to do that which comes to you effortlessly this is what my guru ji also was teaching you need to do your swadharma and swadharma means that which is god given that which is part of you that which comes to you very naturally and effortlessly so go doing the task and things will be meaningful even if it means you are not going to make too much money out of it it is not about money it is about your swadharma that which you are born with that which we you are born for so you need to focus on that and channel everything 
to serve the divine lord almighty alone what does lord shri krishna says do your duties for my sake depending upon me being devoted to me and in detachment that is what is important with this we end this chapter thus ends the 46th chapter of shri guru charitra glory to the all merciful the omnipresent and the ever responsive gurunath since we have 30 more minutes let us begin with a new chapter gurunath's omnipresence chapter 47 this chapter describes how gurunath visits the home of seven of his devotees in the different villages during deepavali and stays with each one of them while also being present at gangapur at the same time uh, how beautiful what does it talk about we actually just did this lesson he is all pervading omnipresent omnipotent and omniscient guru sakshat para brahma that paramatma okay so let us understand this beautiful chapter siddhamuni was very much impressed and pleased with namdarak's earnestness and insatiable longing to listen to more and more of the glorious accounts and leelas of gurunath he told him that he was indeed a very blessed soul even to listening to this leelas this stories of the divine being is a part of a purification we are purifying our soul we are purifying our inner self purification of heart mind and surrender unto the lotus feet of the guru happens so listening to the satsang itself is a very important aspect so that itself forms a part of a sadhana one is to listen then you have to contemplate what what should you do shravan manan nididhyasan so you have to first listen you have to you know cogitate contemplate go in silence meditate meditate on the knowledge imparted then you know and then go in silence and understand the truth absorb it and then go on go on applying in your life that is how knowledge gets firmness within yourself the fructification of knowledge happens only with the grace of the divine lord almighty not otherwise but you have to do your part of this deal which is to do your sadhana and learning the listening to this satsang itself is a purification process it redeems you of your karma you don't understand the great merit it carries see you have lot of time to listen to all the crap in the world people are giving motivational speeches yeah today's day and age we all need all of that there are lot of people talking something you know there's a channel there's a app called clubhouse which is only invite only basis you get to attend and if you are a small fry you don't get to speak there there are only super people you know the super bosses of different companies are talking some great leaders in the world you know who have done something in their life are you know giving this gyan gyan means knowledge <laughs> knowledge as to how do you make billions millions all that you know you have time to listen to all that but you know take some time out listen to this words of the divine lord almighty which will redeem you please remember whatever that you listen about different different subjects yeah that will help you in the material world to certain extent beyond that it has no value okay what is valid today is not valid tomorrow what is valid tomorrow is not valid the next moment so what makes us things whatever we are learning in the material world is always going to be there so there in in the material world everything keeps is dynamic everything keeps changing at a phenomenal speed what was is not now what is will not be there tomorrow so change is constant and you also have to adapt yourself continuously so life is very dynamic like my krishna guru ji will tell in spirituality you know it's it's very interesting initially i i was not able to get this lesson at all so whatever my guru ji would have told me like yesterday i still in my mind i'm very attached to what he told and that's because sometimes it's very favorable thing that he has said which is palatable to my mind so i have accepted that and suddenly i see him changing and then there's a huge explosion that comes in i'm like no you said this how can you change this and many it has taken many years for my gurudev to drill that you know understanding within me that everything is dynamic what he said at that time is valid that time what is saying now is valid now and what he says tomorrow becomes valid at that moment in time the same thing i cannot apply right now so everything is dynamic and especially in spiritual world life is everything is so beautiful and it's dynamic it's constantly evolving so you also have to adapt and constantly evolve you can't say i'm going to be in in the year 1947 i'm not going to change at all i'm still going to be the 70 in century person no way we can't we have to adapt and adopt with time that is extremely important and we have to transform but most important see you you have 
God has given you a beautiful mind. You know why we say this is a very actually interesting movie called Beautiful Mind. You must watch that. How the power of mind, you can become somebody great. But we don't use that same tool to grow in our world. On the contrary, we succumb to the same tool which God has given and to go into our ruins or gutters. Beautiful mind. You know the beautiful mind, why am I saying it's beautiful mind? The mind has the ability to adapt, adopt and transform. So you have to train your mind. The mind is a fantastic tool which is given by God for us to rise above, for us to win in this world. But we don't make proper use of this tool. On the contrary, we succumb to this tool. In uh, Even this morning, my Krishna Guruji was giving a very interesting lesson. You know, it's there is a, there's a saying that goes, not saying, somebody had actually had researched about it. A man's mind is not interconnected, okay? It's compartmentalized. So it goes and goes and focuses on one subject. The moment you say something, it only stays in that particular compartment. It's not trying to connect to different things and derive conclusions out of it. But in case of a woman, her mind, you know, it's all wired. It's all interconnected. If you tell her something, she's going to draw parallel to different things. And then she's trying to reason out, oh, oh, this is what it meant. That is why he said this. You know, so much of gymnastic happens in her. But that is the nature of a woman. But the same quality, if we were able to, do, you know, use it for our well-being and to become successful in this world, we would be somebody great. But why are we using for petty purposes? We are trying to find faults with people. We are trying to, you know, to see, oh, that person is against me. You know that? Somebody is saying something wrong about me. Is this what he's trying to mean? Or did he just say that, you know, how much of dwelling we do in one particular line or subject? Somebody must have said something. We don't let go. We just go dwell into it. We try to draw parallels out of it and try to come up with our own conclusion and judgment. And then, oh, this person is bad. He said something bad to me, you know. If you're all living in this world, you know, this uh, Maya of this mind game. So we need to get out of it. How do you get out of it? The only way is through the grace of the Guru, through this knowledge that is coming to you. So listening to the satsangs is extremely important. Make it a part of your life. Even if you give half an hour to listening to the name of the Divine Lord Almighty, it will do you a lot good than what you can get in this 24 hours in a day that you spend outside of your, you know, the you'll, you spend 100% of your time in the material world. Take that even 30 minutes and spend, you know, in learning about who God is, what is God teaching you, how to become your good self, how to follow the path of righteousness. This is what you have to invest for yourself, for your own good. So let us continue. He told him that he was indeed a very blessed soul. He told him, you have been a Sri Sriman. You have become morally and spiritually very rich. What do you become? Morally and spiritually rich. So when you learn about these divine beings, the lessons that they are teaching, you become morally and spiritually rich. And then you start reasoning things out in your life. You try to look at things in a different perspective. You are not going to then think, oh, this is right, this is wrong. So those understanding slowly, slowly dawns you. And then your perspective of looking at life itself changes. And then you'll also understand the futility of life and the futility of what we are trying to do. Imagine today people, you know, give waste their time, money, energy into doing a lot of things like fulfilling their lusty desires, greed, insatiable greed, and you name it, whatever. What are they doing? They wear, they go and wear best clothes, they buy cars, they buy bags, they shop, 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 endlessly filling. And it's, it's the desires are never ending. And then what else? They go and get themselves intoxicated, go to clubs, bars, pubs, drink, indulge in all sorts of things. What is it going to lead you to? Where are you going to head by doing all that? You are only going to go into the gutters. That is your downfall. Please remember. And in Kali Yuga, the Kali Purusha is doing his job fantastically well. And who does... Um, I think Brahmaji, right? Uh, yeah, Brahmaji tells the Kali Purusha, don't disturb and trouble the devotees of the Guru. Otherwise, you are going to be in trouble. So stay away from the devotees of the Guru, 
So who is saved? Please remember, one who is devoted to the divine being, only the chosen ones. So be very careful about your life and what you are doing and then don't live your life in regret. It is not worth it. No matter how much money you have, it will never give you spiritual wheel. You can't buy spirituality with your money. Everything that is created will be destroyed. Even the power, the fame, the name, it is only for a period of time and for that we all fight so much we try to say oh this is mine i have to be here i want to do this i want to do what what use is it beyond the point life that has no value but remember go after that real knowledge the truth that you want to understand in life that will be eternal that will be permanent that is the only thing that is there constant with you rest everything is futile it will die one day like I said yesterday, you know, we're all looking for what? Companionship. Somebody was telling about the companionship. Why do you need a companion? Who's the best friend? Who's the best companion in your world? The Lord Almighty, the one who's always there with you, who's ever waiting with his arms open. Go for the companionship. You want to get married and go in the gutters because of the companionship. Is it really so? Are you really going for a companionship? So you to have your school friends, so many different friends. Why do you then need a companionship in a woman, in an institution called marriage? What kind of a stupidity is that? Don't you think people are talking nonsense? Of course. Seek the companionship of the divine Lord Almighty. What does yoga mean? Union with the divine, the companionship that you can find within yourself to understand and realize that you are complete with yourself alone. You don't need anybody else. In Christianity, what does the nun do? She commits her life in marriage with the divine Lord Almighty, that is Jesus Christ. And what is what is do they do? They commit their life in service of the God. And what better companion can you have? The God as your husband, the God as your best friend, you know, and he's ever caring. There is no deceit, there is no self-conceit, there is no expectations. It is all about unconditional love. Do you think in this companionship about, uh, uh, in this companionship of your material world, there is unconditional love? There is no love at all. Come on. Are you kidding me? If you say, oh my, my fiance loves me. My wife loves me. My girlfriend loves me. I'm sorry. You are an idiot of the first order. Why? Because she is only there because there, it is a meant to be. There is always like you scratch my back and I will scratch your back. It's like a transaction. I am in it for a purpose. There is no companionship. Companionship is gone out of the window. You will become her servant. Or your wife has to become your servant or your husband will have to become your servant. You know what? I use this term husband material and then wife material you will all become. That is what you will. And then you will make some little the babies who are going to be, you know, pain and endless misery to your life. You have to do so many things for them. And with this, the way the world is heading, the demands are going to be endless. You are going to become a servant to not only to your wife, mother, father, children. You will become the biggest servant of your children. And that is all you are getting into. Companionship? Oh my God. So it is a very interesting thing. Actually, I have to write a book about it. I can actually write a book about it. You know, and people enter that world with eyes open. I am entering that, you know, fire. With I am jumping into that gutter with my eyes open. This is the world we are into today. Why do you need to? So get out of this greed. Even the greed, right? We want so many. You, you are not, yesterday my Krishna Guruji was saying, we are not suff enough, we, we have enough sarees, but I want more sarees. Oh, I see something, you know, attraction. Maya is saying, come, look at me, look at me. So he, that's why this whole world is driven by lust and greed. So the, you know, my Krishna Guruji will say, the moment I see some sari, oh yeah, what are you getting into? Oh greed. Yeah, you want that, you want that, you want that. This is what happens to us. Insatiable greed. Why do we need? Beyond the point, you don't need anything. You just need two pairs of garments to live with. A basic shelter. You know why these day, in those days, people used to live in you know, uh, forest is because to just live a simple life where you're not harming the environment. You don't, uh, you're not gathering things. You have just the basic necessity to sustain your body. And what is the purpose of the body? To attain the highest goal of life, that is spiritual wheel alone. That is all it was. And that's why it is shown, if you look at it, Ramayana, Mahabharata and all. Okay, Mahabharata is about kingly garments. But when you go into the forest, you're just wearing some simple garment, that which is available to you easily, that which you can make yourself. Like uh, Buddha, he, you know, stitched all the torn garments, right? The 
pieces and he made like a patchwork and he made that as a drape for himself and that became into a very beautiful art called kanta work and i love kanta work sadis <laughs> sorry that's not the point the point is to say how this divine beings live imagine gautam buddha was a great king you think he didn't have all the riches but at one point in time he was disgusted with everything and gave up some day i mean i was telling my guruji on the, one of on saturday he was just having a conversation i said i'm tired i think I, by doing all of before i could finish all of this i'm going to become a sanyasi and he literally sneezed <laughs> that means to say yes that is what i'm going to become it's a way it's like a, we say good omen you know uh, that's what it means jokes apart but some day you will have to become disgusted with everything and give up and just be lost in the divine self and serve your purpose that time whether you have a sari you don't have a sari you have a jewelry it doesn't matter to you but today we are still in that mode of saying okay i want to look nice i want to you know wear but again how do you not accrue karma by that let me also teach you when you are dressing for lord shri krishna and if you're doing it for him then you're not satisfying your desires everything becomes because you're doing it for your divine lord almighty you want him to say oh you look very beautiful you want to dress and appear very beautiful for him in that way everything you're doing is for krishna alone then there is no karma accruing to it you're not doing it to satisfy your sensual pleasures please remember you're doing it so that you can you can be the best when you know best offering to the lord himself but that kind of a bhav has to come you cannot just conveniently take this lesson of what i'm teaching oh my i my mind is still there i'm i'm dwelling in my sense object but i will say the lord krishna i'm offering it to you no sir that doesn't work it has to come from your innermost being who are you doing this for initially it was i want to have something i want to wear something i want to eat something only to satisfy my palate my sensual desires but then after that when you evolve and when you are devoted to the lord shri krishna Worry is your ishta when you are devoted to the God and when you are doing everything in adoration to Him, then there is a different story. Your mind is not dwelling in the sense object. It doesn't say, "Oh, I am looking nice." You want to say, "Oh, how? What will Krishna tell me when I go in front of Him? How does the Lord look at me? He should He should be, you know, pleased with me. I want to be the best to my divine Lord Almighty. I want to, you know, make Him feel very proud of me. So whatever that you are doing, you want to be best in that. so you are going to put 100% effort because you are not working for any material worldly bosses wife children but you are only doing it for that divine lord in love of him because he has given you the job that body the task yesterday my krishna guruji was again teaching it you can't say i am doing it oh i have done this this i should be you should just cut that off you should know that the one the one for whom you are doing is the divine lord almighty and please remember it is his will that is making it happen so you are nobody to do anything like my krishna guruji will say i use idiots like you to get my work done but he himself will not lift his finger because that is who the lord is he is detached he is the witness alone his mere witness his supreme divine consciousness he physically is not doing but yet he runs this entire universe with the fraction of the power of his yoga maya please remember that is the truth and don't think i am doing i am the great doer this money is mine that is mine who do you think you are that is all because of the karma that you have earned you know who is lord shri krishna karma phala data the dispenser of the fruits of action so don't use your ego sir you will be literally in one shot like that you will be nowhere your ego can get destroyed so be careful about what you speak what you say how you do and those who are getting this knowledge those who have the guru please be very careful how you evolve what you evolve and that is see spirituality is to each his own i cannot live your spiritual life or you cannot live mine it is what truly we want for ourselves so the knowledge comes to you how much you want to take out of it is the choice you have nobody can say you have to be this you are only shown the right path it is only that is knowledge which is given to you walking that path is your effort that is why lord shri krishna says it is only with self effort the my guru ji will always give everybody the choice he will show the upside and the downside you know taking the decision and the right choice is in your hands alone he is never going to decide for anybody please remember and based on your decision the path will open up the path to the destination will open up 
Please remember, one Lord Jesus says, I am the way, the path and the destination to where are you trying to go? You can't go anywhere. At the end of the day, you have to come to me alone. So let us continue. You have become morally and spiritually very rich. Very few would have such a blessed opportunity as you have had in listening to the Guru Charitra in such great detail. Let me tell you one more anecdote which tells us of Guru Nath's omnipresence and omnipotence. One year, sometime before Deepavali, some of the devotees had come for Guru Nath's darshan from other places and each one of them requested Guru Nath that he should come to his village and grace and stay in his house during Deepavali and bless him, his household and his village. Everyone thus wanted thus wanted that Guru Nath should specially visit his particular village and his, his house and bless him. To every one of them, Guru Nath was replying in the affirmative and assuring them that he would certainly visit each one's particular village and would stay with him during the Deepavali festival. This was intriguing to everyone. And they were all wondering how Guru Nath would be able to fulfill his promises of visiting at the same time all the different places. He promised at least seven devotees from different places, villages to this effect. See, we always have doubt. We think a Guru is a very ordinary human being. How will he be present? How will he come at the same time to meet all of us? But the Guru is who omnipresent, omnipotent. We don't understand this all-pervading being. Remember in Shirdi Sa, in Sai Sat Charitra, Baba's lesson, in which he tells one person when he invites him for some Upanayana ceremony, he says, I will come with two boys, two young boys. But this person had a doubt. He expected Baba to come in, his, the, in that physical form, the way he wants to come, right? The, the form that he is. He was expecting him to come in that form alone. Again, the all-pervading is one aspect. I am talking about the all-pervading. But in this case, the story is slightly different. But let us see what happens here. But coming back to the story in Sai Sat Charitra, what did Baba do? He said, I will come with two boys. So he comes, this, this saint, that uh, the, per, the person, that old sage, the saint, and these two boys that comes together. And he says, I am going to come for lunch. He arrives one hour earlier. At that time, this person says, please come at 12 o'clock or one hour later, 12.30 p.m. So, they go back and then come over. But yet, he still sees, where is Baba? Baba promised me to come. He said he will come. But he he's not able to correlate to the message what Baba said. I will come with two boys. And he still thinks Baba is going to come in that physical form of his and, and come and, you know, bless that ceremony. He, that is what they think. But how the divine being can manifest and visit you, you don't understand. We still use our petty mind, our yardstick. And then after the ceremony is over, the, the sannyasi and the two boys eat and they go away, the fakir. They leave that place. But he's saying, oh, Baba promised, but why didn't he come? And then Baba says, I came, I had the food, I accepted it, but you didn't recognize me. So whose problem is that? We doubt. Why do we doubt? Because we limit them. We think they are also having human limitations like us. What we don't realize is that there is no limitations to such great divine being because they are not the body. Please remember, they have only manifested. What does manifest mean? They have donned this body as a garb, as a garment. So they have all the power of the Parabrahma. So you think just because they are bottled you know, in a small body, doesn't mean that they are incapable of anything? Of course not. They are capable. Their power is something that we cannot even fathom. Please remember, Dashta Siddhis are always around them saying Tatas too. And that is the reason why my Krishna Guruji will say, be very careful about what you ask, what you say, what you speak. Because I am not the one who is going to do anything to anyone. It is Dashta Siddhis around me. My universe, my nature is always watching and whatever is going to be coming back to you is going to come from my universe and nature and the Ashtasiddhis. They are always saying Tatastu. So we should never limit 
this divine masters just in the way they appear you cannot limit them to that body they are limitless they are the athang sagar like my krishna guru ji when you look at him he appears so ordinary imagine he's just looking at you are looking at a physical body some body which he has drawn like a garment and you are looking at him oh and you no know, we go by his appearance his you know his the way he looks his color oh then we'll make judgment oh he looks black he looks like a south indian north indian we are going we are being so biased in our mind we go by color and all these things oh my god please remember the divine being the supreme divine consciousness has no color no form it is formless it's colorless it's ever free it's eternal being in avadhut gita this is what is mentioned there is no form there's no akara there is no color it's colorless that is how it is but who is giving it a color it a form that is called maya and the manifest domain you see that body but what you need to see is beyond that that divine being which is effulgent which is always eternal it's limitless you can't even fathom it that is who it is and please remember there is one being who lives in golok vrindavan and who is that the supreme divine person and the one abode the abode which is eternal which is golok vrindavan so lord shri krishna says i am present in my abode as the supreme divine person always at all times so he is always there in that form in that manifest form in that abode everything will perish except the golok vrindavan because that is the eternal abode of the eternal lord almighty so coming back so don't make judgments and don't think how is it possible you know please remember in the world of the divine lord almighty everything is possible because the limitation is caused by our mind our petty mind but the in the divine lord almighty is there's no limitations so let us see what happens he promised at least seven devotees from different places villages to this effect on trayodashi day itself gurunath was present at the door of each one of the devotees house simultaneously whom he had promised thus he made his appearance simultaneously in different villages he was received by the household of each one of the devotees of those places all the three days that is from trayodashi to amavasya at the same time he was at gangapur to actually he had not left from the place at all how beautiful is that he was fully present at the deepavali festival in the mat on kritika purnima that's kartika purnima day when all devotees came to gangapur for deepardana deeparadana the devotees from different villages were pouring out their gratitude to gurunath for having graced their respective villages during deepavali the people of gangapur were getting wonder struck as gurunath was amidst them at gangapur only during the deepavali everyone realized and understood the omnipresence and omnipotence of gurunath everyone burst into singing the glories of the lord gurunath indeed is the supreme purusha of the purusha sukta sahasra shira shirsha purusha sahasra sahas sorry sahasraksha sahasrapad with his hands which eyes and feet and everywhere what does it mean he is that one sahasra means with thousand arms thousand you know he's with all he's all pervading with thousand feet thousand legs everything this thousand that is who he is that is what he sees with his hands eyes and feet everywhere like lord shri krishna gave arjuna the vision of seeing him in this virat form even lord shri krishna says in that i don't know how many forms how many faces how many hands how many legs how many eyes i have i can't even count them that is who this divine being is and we are trying to learn this divine master or limit him to some you know fragile human body please don't ever make that mistake please understand the all pervasiveness of this divine master and when you have such a privilege to be with such a great divine being and serve him make every opportunity and make it your life goal to wear yourself out in service to to the lotus feet of this great guru and lord shri krishna and when you are devoted unto the lotus feet of your gurudev lord shri krishna himself is very pleased with you and he comes and touches the devotee of the guru who is the very self of lord shri krishna himself 
and that is the greatest of the blessing you would get so serve your master with absolute devotion love and with shraddha and bhakti there is nothing more than that that you got to do follow his instruction to the t obey his command and the guru's way of doing things is unfathomable so don't ever judge him don't question him understand that he is omnipresent omnipotent and omniscient even if you don't say anything to him he is still all knowing and whatever you have to get he will bestow upon you at the right time to so don't go with the begging bowl to the guru the guru is very compassionate being he is very kind you know when he sees people you know completely lost in their material world he get he takes compassion on them he doesn't get angry on the contrary he feels very sad because these people are you know not knowing what they are doing they are going into further gutters so he comes to save them he can only confer his grace upon them and that is who he is a compassionate mother so take refuge unto the lotus feet of this greatest mother that you ever have in your life and be devoted life will become beautiful even if you don't have your guru physically in your life though doesn't matter seek the grace of the god magic will happen so with that we end our 47th chapter that ends the 47th chapter of guru charitra glory to the all merciful the omnipresent and the ever responsive guru nath we just have 5 minutes i'm not going to start a new chapter we'll continue tomorrow morning so wishing you all a very happy wednesday thank you for joining shri guru charitra satsang ओम श्री महागणपते नम ओम श्री गुरुदेव दत्त ओम श्री सचिदानंद सद्गुरु साईनाथ महाराज की जय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय दिगंबरा दिगंबरा श्रीपाद वल्लभ दिगंबरा ओम श्री कृष्ण गुरुनाथ नाथाय श्री गुरुवे नम ओम देवी दुर्गाय नम ओम श्री कृष्णापण नमस्त कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गुरु today we'll begin with a new chapter that is chapter 48 farmers rich harvest wow this is a very wonderful chapter this chapter describes how gurunath helped his farmer devotee to get a rich harvest of crop while all the crops of that area during that season were devastated by the cyclone 